All right, what's going on guys? This is Logan with West Desert Wheeler. Welcome back. Today, we're going to be doing a build breakdown on my Axial Capra sitting on top of SS Deluxe Portal Axles. This thing is an absolute monster, and in the time that I've been wheeling it, it's been crushing lines and opening up new lines, meaning it's doing things that no other rig has ever done before. Mostly due to the fact that it's bigger, uh, overall wider and longer. So let's hit some of just the general overall specs of the car uh, and to kick this off. So to start as it sits, this thing weighs in at six pounds, two ounces without a battery. So depending on the battery you're gonna use, Typically, I run a 1300 milliamp 4S and or a 1400 milliamp 3S. So just a few more ounces on top of that. Overall, I'm very impressed with how lightweight it actually is, considering how much metal is hanging out on the inside of these front wheels. We'll get to that more in a minute. The wheelbase on this car is 13.6 inches, which actually, the last time I had measured it, I thought it was somewhere near 14 uh, it's a little bit shorter than that. It's 13.6, so it's a little closer to reasonable. The front track width is like 11 and 7 eighths, so just under that 12 inch mark. And the rear sits in at about 11 and 5 eighths. So the rear is just a hair narrower. That's because I'm running different hubs in the rear than the front. The reason I'm running different hubs in the front is to get the weight hangers lined up just correctly so that there's no interference between the wheel and the loaded dice weights. Now this is actually an Axial Capra because of Axial's naming system. The Capra is based on the UTB platform, the Unlimited Terrain Buggy, which would be the drivetrain. I've changed out all the drivetrain, but the design of the cage is actually is what is named the Capra. This has a 100% complete Axial Capra cage. I've just changed everything else on it. So this truly is an Axial Capra. It's just its peak form sitting in front of me, or at least peak form as of April 2024. Now I definitely need to send a thank you and shout out to my friend Jason over at Bonehead RC. I gave him a few different color suggestions on the panels, and he went ahead and ignored that and gave me a metallic white. Uh, pearl white, I should say, with a little bit of purple and then some cool, you know, just some fancy paint effects. Gave me kind of the cartoon look while doing like the little uh, hexagonal design on the inside. It's really cool, and these panels really start to pop now that we've got them on the car. Uh, I wasn't as sold on them before I put them on the car, but I really do like them now. Thank you very much, Jason. They are super cool, so thanks for the work that you put in there. Let's take a look at the belly area of this car. It's just something super cool because it's a little unique compared to other Capras. One of the standout features is the way that the servo actually mounts on the axle. It's a behind the servo axle mount, but it's also a lay down servo mount. So it lays the flat long way as low as possible. And then they have Deluxe sends it with a 3D printed spacer that goes from the axle tube up to and around your servo to just make this surface as smooth as possible if you were to end up on some rocks. And I indeed have ended up on some rocks. The servos themselves, let's just touch on that while we are here. Reef's RC 1100 smart servos, front and rear. They are running on an 8.4 volts coming out of a external BEC. My ESC and motor, we will talk about when we pull the truck apart so we can actually get a good look at them. But these guys should be right up around that 1100 ounce inch mark. Super strong, super capable servos. And we are also running the Reefs Pro HD horn. Is that what they're called? It's the longer horn. It's not 24 millimeter in length. It's like 26 or 27. So uh, yeah, thanks very much Reefs for your support here on the channel. Always greatly appreciated. And uh, the way I wedge my car into some of these cracks, I really have no other option than to run just ridiculous servos, especially with these big grippy tires. These things like to get uh, lots of traction in the cracks where I like to drive. I've always been really big on proportions of the height of the tire that your car is, as well as kind of how the overall look just kind of goes together. And I really feel that where the axles are placed under this vehicle are really more in line with something that would be real, right? So I like that the rear axle is pushed out to the back edge of the cage. 
Uh, I think that looks really good. I didn't want to push my front axle too far like out in front of the grill area. So I've specifically set the wheelbase and set my axles in place of where I wanted them in relevance to the cage. So uh, this car, I would say it's like big design flaw. And I kind of know this because of the way that I wanted it to look and sit proportionally. Um, I actually have longer links in the front off of the skid than I do off of the back, which means it is not a forward skid. It is actually a rearward skid. Now it's only by a couple millimeters, but it is there. And I figured I'd share that just show you guys, like I am willing to make some sacrifices here, but, uh, that's not exactly ideal. Oh, although from the performance I've seen, uh, it's not slowing me down any with this rig. Uh, another thing is these are not high clearance links. These are straight titanium links that I picked up from Vanquish. And uh, unfortunately the top link lengths that I had picked up were supposed to go out to the center point at the top of the axle here on the aluminum link mount. But due to the car's setup and the way I had to run the servo horns, I couldn't run my upper links out to that top point on the axle. So I had to mount them to the carbon fiber and uh, just basically had to do with the axle design itself. The car fully functions just fine. It's still four link front and rear, works really good, but it, it changed the link length that I needed on the uppers. So I did not have a matching set of uh, titaniums on the uppers. I can do that at this point and I'm debating whether I want to or not, but uh, overall we got the wheelbase set exactly where I wanted it. Um, it's a little goofy that it's a rearward skid, but again, it works so good out on the rocks, it's kind of hard to argue. Underneath the hood, we do have a WDW micro winch mount in here, and we've got the Reefs 99 micro winch. Uh, super cool setup. A lot of people confuse this spool here or the winch itself with taking up your battery tray room. That's not true. What happens is if you have a big fat pack like the four cell that I run, it's difficult to squeeze between the spool and this dash bar right here. So I actually just take a 1.5 driver and uh, I will remove the spool to install my battery and then I will put the spool back on. It doesn't even need to be that tight because the splines hold it and grip that it needs to spin the spool, but uh, it doesn't need to be that tight because also the hood sits right down on it. Um, it's very, very close fitment. So it's not like the spool could like come up and off anyway but uh, I do leave the screw in there. I just don't like really crank down on it. It makes it easier to remove and uh, put back in place when needed. So you can still run a full size battery pack. Anything that will fit in the cap or battery tray will still fit. Although I personally just run something like a 1300 4S, 1400s, 3S, somewhere in that range just gives you a good amount of room. And uh, truthfully, I get like over an hour runtime with those battery packs. So I don't see a need to go any bigger you can throw an extra one in your pocket and double your runtime, and uh, it really simplifies things for me. All right, guys, so it's not quite as pretty of a shot as I was kind of hoping for, but uh, it's, it's a little more tied together than I kind of remembered. Um, unfortunately, with the receiver being mounted in the fuel cell, all your wires have to run into your cage, and without just completely taking the car apart, it's kind of a pain to do that. So um, this, is, this is kind of where we're at. But let's take a look at what the heart of the car is here and what we've got. So the transmission is a deluxe Nod 2 in the ultralight version. So it's got the carbon fiber plates. The Nod 2 is geared specifically to be ran with straight axles. So having the portal axles, we get extra gear reduction, which also means our top speed is going to be slower uh, running through portals than straight axles. So. We get extra gear reduction, which is what I wanted because we're running these big tires and I know that I'm going to go push into difficult to push through places and uh, having more gear reduction uh, is actually easier on the electronics. Your motor doesn't have to work as hard. Um, speaking of our motor, we went with the Holmes Hobbies Revolver Classic in 1950 KV. I run this on 4S. It is not recommended on their site to run on 4S, but this is the biggest revolver that Holmes offers. Basically everything you need to know about revolvers, the longer the can, the more torque you get. This is the longest can that Holmes makes. So this is a ton of torque coming out of the motor and then we've got extra gear reduction going through the transmission into our axles. Uh, as far as the drive shafts, these are all steel drive shafts from Incision, Vanquish basically. 
Um, with this long of a wheelbase, I actually had to buy two sets of these drive shafts because they have a long side and a short side because they're originally made for like SCX 10 2 based stuff. And uh, again, just trying to reach all the way out here and with our tiny transmission, its outputs are pretty far in on the skid plate itself. So uh, I had to run two of the long side drive shafts going out to our axles. Luckily, I have one car in the fleet that actually needs two of the short versions, so it kind of worked out. The short versions went in one car, and the long sides went in this car. As far as the flat skid itself, that is from UC Fab, and I got one of their blank skids so that I could drill and tap for a custom transmission, which works out perfect for this Deluxe Nod 2 Ultralight. Let's see if we can get a shot of the bottom there. You can see that I countersunk the screw heads and that is now nice and flush. And uh, that's how our mounting holes ended up on here. Again, it might be difficult to see, I apologize about that. But uh, down here in our door pocket, this blue piece is our external BEC. And then I've got uh, down in here, zip tied into place up against the door panel. I actually got our Holmes Hobbies V3 uh, Crawlmaster ESC, which is the one that came all put together. It's their, what is it, 32-bit ESC. I really like the tune Holmes has on this. I like the size of it. It also comes with a heat sink and it also comes shrink wrapped. But uh, I had to cut a little bit of that away and delete the bullet connector style wiring that Holmes had on there. I just wanted to shorten up the wires and really clean it up. But as you can see in here, like it's pretty minimalist. The transmission is very small and lightweight. We got a good size motor on here, but that was intentional. And then our ESC is pretty small and it's tucked up there with our external BEC. So everything is pretty simple. We got our wires running from our servo on axle up into our receiver box. Just a couple zip ties to help tidy those up. And uh, really that's all there is going on inside of this capper. Of course, we got our micro winch mount that uh, ties into the nose of the cage here. Those are available at westdesertwheeler.com. And uh, now let's kind of put it back together and we're going to cover the details on these axles. Maybe we shouldn't put it back together. Let's... Uh, Let's get, keep the cage out of the way and then we'll take a look at these axles. All right, so I think we got to a good looking shot here. A little bit, a little bit hard to show the axle exactly how I want while it's kind of assembled here. These are SS Deluxe portal axles. So there are SS Deluxe axles that have a normal C-hub for a straight axle. Deluxe did something really cool where they made a C-hub that fits Capra, and SCX 10.3 style knuckles out here for portals. So essentially you take an axle that already exists and it just adapts it out to the uh, Capra portal design. So really cool. Um, the other thing that they did, like we already mentioned, is that behind the axle lay down servo mount. That's super cool in my opinion. I really like how that turned out and just getting the weight of the servo as low as you can. I mean, in line with the axle tube, uh, any lower, it would be hanging up on things. Now, one really cool feature of these C-hubs that go on here is that there are splines out here on the axle housing itself that the C's uh, lock onto. And then uh, you can also clock these C's in uh, a lot of, there's a lot of adjustability to it, the way that they had them machined. So you can add or remove caster angle more or less angle on the portal seat itself. So you can also tune your pinion angle. If you, for some reason, like getting more servo clearance, want to run your pinion angle at a higher up angle, you can still keep the caster angle needed. So like something like a Vanquish capper portal, that's all machined as one piece. If you want to change your pinion angle, you're also changing your portal angle out here. So some people like to run their portal angles with more caster. Some people like to run them straight up. And then sometimes their servos like sitting all weird in there. I really like the way this works. You can move and tune that individually and uh, everything works out really nice. It's really nice machine finish quality on here. Also, these things without brass, this rear axle is surprisingly lightweight. Uh, aluminum portal boxes from Deluxe. They've got the machined aluminum housings from the SS Deluxe axles. Uh, even the truss out here is fully aluminum amazingly lightweight. You got the carbon fiber plate out here for your servo mount with a little bit of 3D printed material down in there. And uh, you have options to mount your upper links. So as I mentioned, you've got this uh, truss right here. Well, there's also a bolt hole to go through right here. So if you wanted to super triangulate your uppers in the rear with a good amount of anti-squat up there, you don't need a link riser with this setup. It's basically built in. 
I originally tried to set up my truck to work with that, but if I did that, uh, having a link on both sides of that mount right there, uh, using the servo the way I have it, I had to run a super short servo horn, and then I couldn't get the throw that these axles are capable of. So I felt like I was compromising one way or the other. Talked to Deluxe about it. They suggested that I mount my links out here on this carbon fiber plate and it worked out really nice. I just had to come up with different links to be able to do that. So that's why these links ended up where they did. These are more parallel, less triangulated, but we have so much triangulation from the center mounted link in the skid plate. Plus this axle is pretty wide going out to the link mounts down here. It's still very, it's super rigid like this and it works out really nice. Obviously my shocks are just sitting up under the cage here to give us a little bit better view. These are Traxxas big bore shocks. I am running internal springs in them. The rears have springs to help hold the shock up. And in the front, I have internal springs to help hold them down and closed. So uh, just some random springs I had laying around, nothing special. I don't have a link to it or anything. Just kind of do it by feel kind of thing. Deluxe makes these Capra portal boxes specific to these SS Deluxe axles you will definitely want to pick up Deluxe's version of these portal boxes. And the main reason why your tie rod screws into the knuckle, uh, that is specifically made to wrap as far as possible around these axles and give you crazy steering angle. These things are capable of like 50 degrees plus steering, probably like 53 degrees if I were to give it a solid guess. Uh, crazy sharp steering. My rear in particular seems to turn a little bit sharper than my fronts. Not exactly sure why, but uh, this thing has crazy angle. And uh, without getting these knuckles, you lose a lot of the angle. Um, I've tried to run different brass knuckles on these. It, they will bolt in, they will work and everything. You just lose steering angle. So definitely pick up the Deluxe if you're picking up these axles. Uh, if you're going for it, go all the way is what I'm saying. On these portal boxes, I have Deluxe's loaded dice weight hanger adapter portal box covers. So there's two screws and uh, it's got two little posts that come out to support the loaded dice weight. Uh, that's what's sitting on the outside of this brass portal cover out here. And then of course we've got the brass loaded dice weight hangers with the tungsten slugs and these are fully loaded. So we got the brass knuckle with the brass hanger and the tungsten out in the wheel. Now what's super cool about these loaded dice wheels is it gets your center of gravity and your weight as low as possible. These weights literally hang down inside the wheel so you have to get their proprietary wheels to go with it. Um, they are carbon fiber 2.2s and uh, they are glued together. There's no beadlock here. This is all glued together. The glue is insanely strong. It will last and get you some crazy places, but just be aware that uh, those are glue-ons. I apologize how long that was out of focus. That's on me. My camera's fighting me tonight. These weight hangers transform rock crawlers. If you have a sportsman or an MOA and you don't have weight hangers, you need to get weight hangers. It will blow you away the difference that it makes. And here on this car itself, this thing also made a huge difference going to these weight hangers. Super cool. Deluxe sent me out the large brass portal covers for these. I happen to have the loaded dice set up off my sportsman with those uh, portal cover adapters. And I put those on instead of the uh, big brass weights that they sent with it. Although those big brass weights are excellent. They're on my class three, but just the way things worked out, I wanted to go with loaded dice on this build to really just push it over the top. So guys, as I mentioned, this is kind of just the ultimate Capra available right now. Uh, it is an axial capper cage outside of that it's all fully custom this thing's super wild i'm really glad that i decided to go a little bit crazy on it with the longer wheelbase the big proper tutus by the way these are deluxe goat tires and this is their firmest compound they offer this carbon fiber loaded dice wheels which means we also have crawler innovations loaded dice cut foams uh, dual stage foams available from deluxe that whole wheel tire combo with the loaded dice weights is available through Deluxe. The portal cover adapters and the axles and the transmission are all available from Deluxe. They also do really nice cut to length drive shafts that you can pick up as well as excellent shocks. Um, I just already had some shocks on hand and those drive shafts ended up working out due to that other car that I have. Um, those are the only two places that like I kind of wish I would have went Deluxe, but it is how it is what it is. So at this point, guys, 
This car has always been a temporary build, truthfully. Um, I wasn't sure if I was going to keep it in this state. I'm really still not sure because I have a Thai Pro Custom uh, MJ43 chassis, which is a two-seat Jesse Haynes uh, trail car chassis clone. Um, it's super cool, and I've been thinking I wanted to put these axles underneath it because the cage is pretty large scale. I think that these would work out really nice, especially having those servos set up how they are. Just being so performance-minded, um, I think it would have worked out well with that cage. This car works so good as is um, that I don't know if I'm actually going to change it or not. I might just keep it like this. So you guys are going to have to drop a comment down below and let me know whether I should keep this or whether I should put that uh, Type Pro chassis on deluxe axles. And I'm curious to hear what you guys think about that. Uh, this thing's been out there crushing the hard lines. It's super fun to drive. Uh, rear steer buggy, but just at its, at its extreme. Uh, super cool. Uh, so that's why things like those upper links, I didn't have the full polish on the build where it's just like everything's super dialed in. And truthfully, every build I have, there's things I want to change on all of them. Uh, pretty much so there's always something that could be improved on like uh, these internal spring shocks are probably not the most ideal I believe they're like a 106 millimeter. Uh, it's the long Traxxas ones. So whatever those are I'm pretty sure it's like 106 millimeter eye to eye might be a little bit longer I don't remember but uh, just for your reference. So it gets lots of articulation the four link works well There's no binding uh, as far as getting the transmission set up in this skid uh, I do fully recommend that you put together like the whole car as a roller so that you know where your link mounts are going to be and everything where the hardware where it needs to be before you actually mount your transmission in there. Make sure that your drive shafts clear your links that are mounted to the skid. Make sure the motor, especially being a revolver, is not coming in contact with anything. I had to clearance out some of the capper cage up in here. Uh, very minimal, but uh, yeah, you just got to make sure that this revolver is not in contact with anything. And I've literally got this thing clearance by like one to two millimeters in four or five different areas. And uh, it just, just barely works out, but uh, it in fact does work out. So pretty stoked on that. Outside of that, it's a super fun car. It's a new experience because it's so much wider and longer. It's something different. And uh, that's what I like most about it. And out there on the trails, it's proving that different can be extremely beneficial. That's been the build breakdown here on my ultimate deluxe axle Capra breakdown. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I know I certainly do with this car. Again, not sure if it's going to stay like this or if it's going to change into something else. Everything's subject to change around here and uh, given enough time, it definitely will change. It just depends how long it stays like this. So my name is Logan with West Desert Wheeler. I will have links down below. Special thanks to Axial for sending me out a four-wheel steer Capra to do that video that I called my favorite mods to Axial Capras. If you guys have an Axial Capra and you're just getting started, be sure to check out that video. It's way more tame than this. And uh, ultimately, if you stick with it long enough, you'll end up with something crazy like this anyway. Uh, Deluxe sent out some axles in the transmission. Thank you guys very much. Uh, I reached out to them and they were more than happy to be on board with this project. So thanks very much to Deluxe. I really appreciate the support there, guys. Again, thanks to our friends over at Reefs for helping out with these servos in there. Not just the 1100s, but also the 99 micro winch under the hood. And uh, always, appre always appreciate Reefs support. And then, of course, my friends over at Vanquish for getting us some titanium lower links, things like that. Miscellaneous ends and uh, Vanquish always supports the projects here on the channel and of course Sky RC Hobby Shop in St. George, Utah. If you guys come out to visit Sand Hollow, check out the area with your RCs, be sure to stop by Sky RC in St. George. Tell him that I sent you his way. Cody's awesome and uh, has lots of really cool crawler parts in stock, so be sure to check him out. Until next time guys, my name is Logan with West Desert Wheeler. We will see you in the next one. Keep the rubber side down.